Hey y'all, so I'm gonna show you my Forerunner build today that I have started from the ground up. I know that it's been a long time and a lot of you have been asking, hey, how, what's, what's your build sheet? What have you done? What are the things you wanna do? Uh, how'd you do this and that? So today I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna show y'all every single thing that I've done to this vehicle and how it's gotten to this point. Check it out. Right off the bat, let's check out the rear bumper. So this thing is completely custom made. Nobody owns it, no company has made it. A very good friend of mine and I, and his welder, uh, we basically bought some raw metals, um, write some things down on paper and put it to the table and welder and we made a bumper out of it. It's actually very simple. Uh, it's very similar style to the Windworks, which in my opinion is the king of Forerunner and Toyota bumpers. We're very inspired by their design, as well as the minimalistic designs that they have implemented into the off-road game. So checking it out a little bit closer. Now mind you, this is not a perfect bumper, okay? This is not something that you would put out on the market for perfection, for customer satisfaction. I'm a simple dude. So essentially, with all of the imperfections and overspray and horrible cuts, to me, this thing is perfect. It does exactly what I need it to. It was extremely minimal cost. We're talking less than $300 in materials. And this thing came together. Some booger welds, some flaws, but this thing is bulletproof. So you have a crossbar right here, right there. That bottom one is two by three, three sixteenths thick steel. And that replaced the factory crossbar. All of the steel bar material on this build was done by two by three steel or one by one. Again, it is all 3 16 inch thick steel tubing. We're utilizing an EMS off-road hinge with 5,000 PSI of strength when it comes to the tension on the steel, as well as a 4X Innovations, 4x Innovations, however people say it, their latch, their HD latch. It is a really heavy duty setup with minimal cost, everything costing less than $300 for the materials itself. This is a single swing out design. That's it. Fully operational tailgate, swings all the way out. And I eventually plan to put a table back here that can fold down once the single swing out is open. So that's pretty much it for the bumper. It's super simple. Um, I do have a front runner five gallon jerry can that I purchased from Overland Addict. Uh, I got this guy at Harbor Freight probably four years ago. Uh, it's still holding strong. I have a 285-7017 spare tire Nitto Ridge Grappler on a TRD Pro 4Runner wheel. It is not the right size. I have 315 7017s on the Forerunner right now on the SCS F5 wheels, but that's all I got. I used to run the 285s, now I don't. So I got these guys off of Amazon. They were like 65 bucks, 70 bucks. I used them one time in my life and that paid itself off and they are still fine. These are held on by the front runner Stratchets. They're actually really cool. Um, they really know how to explain them. They're like an adjustable bungee cord. That's pretty cool because they're front runner and front runner is awesome. Up here, we have a 48 inch high lift jack with a temporary flagpole. It screws right into the top. Uh, for Memorial Day and 4th of July, we like to fly the flag, fly the colors. So that'll be coming off as soon as 4th of July is over. Walking around, we have the Rago Fabrication, I forgot what they're called, their exterior Molly window panel which is awesome. 
Uh, I have a roto packs that can go on there. You can get so many different mounts. It's essentially universal what you can do to these things, what you can put on them, which is why I like it. Uh, these little guys, these are like 25, 30 bucks off of Amazon. They're extremely bright and they're for scene lighting at nighttime. Usually I have the rooftop tent up here, but it's summertime in Texas and there ain't no camping happening. So the tent's gone temporarily. I have the Sherpa Crestone, Crestone, whatever you want to call it, roof rack. It's phenomenal. It's uh, the perfect balance between aesthetics and functionality. In my opinion, it is the best looking roof rack. And then I also have this cheapy, I believe it's a 40 inch single row light bar that I have had for an eternity. I threw it up there and it still works and it's bright and right. These are the Forerunner Lifestyle stick on visors. Shout out to Nikki Breidenbaugh from Rochester, New York for those. And this is an SR5 four wheel drive model, okay? This thing has brought me places that TRDs have gone and that TRDs have gotten stuck. That a track is a wonderful thing. So being an SR5, it does have the TRD hood. Again, shout out to Nikki Breidenbaugh, Rochester, New York, he's the homie. It has last fit LED headlights. The bulbs themselves, they are 6,000K. Morimoto four banger fog lights. These things are awesome. They are the SAE driving models. Has the TRD balance, which I went on YouTube and found a video that shows you how you can mount a, uh, what is it, TRD balance on an SR5 bumper. You cut the tabs off behind it and you put some zip screws through the top and the bottom and you're good to go. It's kind of uh, janky, but it works. So coming around, Amazon strikes again. These things were like 35 bucks. They're pretty bright. I can post the links in the description if y'all are interested. Let me know in the comments. Going down to the suspension, the heartbeat, the bread and butter. I have the Inspired Overland coilover with reservoir suspension. It is adjusted to approximately 3.4, 3.5 inches up front. These are the Dobinson control arms. However, they do not give me enough caster and they, they give me negative one degree of camber. There's nothing you can do about that. However, shout out to Inspired Overland. They sent me their new fully adjustable upper control arms, which will be going on likely this week or the next to get complete adjustment and control of the upper control arm. Cannot wait for those to go on. Again, shout out to Inspired Overland. So we're at about three and a half inches of front lift with the 315s, which are like a thick 34, not a tall one. I did the, I, I'm so sorry about the wind, everybody. Aggressive, high clearance cut. People call this the Viper cut. It grinds my gears, it's not a Viper cut. That's what the new generation of fifth gen owners call it. But if you've been in the overland and the off-road game, you know that this is called a high clearance cut. I have that on both sides and it's pretty high, not gonna lie. Shout out to the wife for the decals. These are the SCS F5 wheels. They are the color black with the dark gray sticker. They are the 17 by nine minus 38 offset. Inspired Overland rear suspension. My tire ate the shocks when I was on a trail but they're still functioning, they're not leaking. I'll get that addressed later on. These shocks are beef, they are huge. Coming back to the rear, we have the Inspired Overland adjustable rear pan hard, I call it a track bar. And what this does is it adjusted the left to right positioning of the axle, alleviating the, I think it's called dog trailing, dog walk centering the axle. Another one of my favorite things in this entire build is this WeBoost Signal Booster. This is the Drive Sleek model. It is only about 240 bucks, 250 bucks on Amazon or anywhere else. What it gives you is one mobile device of essentially full signal. If you have one bar of service where you're at, this thing will give you two to three more bars on top of that. You just have to have some sort of signal and it will boost it. It's wonderful. Coming to the interior, we have 5% tint all the way around. 
with the Texas state legal limit of 25% on the front. I have this off-brand switch panel. I built this thing when I had uh, no funds to my name, but I made it happen anyways. It's about 80 bucks and it works great. Turns on the light bar, the cubes, left side, right side lights, all of it. It's wonderful. We have the Rego Manufacturing dash panel. This thing is awesome, okay? Super low profile, wonderful manufacturing. The welds on these things, it's really hard to see in the video. They're immaculate. They're perfect little dimes. Uh, it has dual side antenna, I'm sorry, microphone mounts left and right side. It has a very wide real estate land up here for any kind of accessories you want to update, you want to add to it. And I got this shift knob off of Amazon for $10, but it kind of made it look like a Phillips head screwdriver. So that's going to be going away soon. But that's about it for the interior mods. Last fit LED lights on the inside. Rego panel here. Couple of patches up top, some come, some go. And then I have this kind of like interior net that I attach to the inside. I'll put blankets up there. I'll put random things up there and trips. But that's really about it for the interior. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this build, how I got to where it is. Anything I might've left out, please let me know in the comments. I will be as fast as I can to reply to them. Summing it up, three and a half inches front, about three and a quarter rear because the bumper did weigh it down a little bit. We're putting Dobinson's uh, 701 rear springs in to get that rear back up. If you guys have any questions, again, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope y'all are having an awesome day. We'll see you next time.